Hi guys, in this video, we'll be handling joints in SQL. Now, why do I need joints? Uh, what's the point of joints? Well, most databases are designed to hold multiple tables and each table would hold a certain type of object. And if you look at this Formula 1 table here, uh, database here, you'd see like one object is the drivers and that's the, the old drivers are put in a separate table and all driver details are in this table. Then you'd have constructors, that would be the second type of object, and all constructors are placed in this table. And then you'd have something which are not real physical objects, but still like driver standings, so they're placed in a separate table or constructor standings or lap times, pit stops, races, these are placed in a separate table and also the results. So um, that the whole point of it is that to simplify the design of a database, you put each type of object in a, in a, in a table on its own. And then to uh, get some decent results, what you do is you um, uh, combine or link these tables together. And the way you link them are through or is through uh, common fields. So for instance, if we see here results, the results contain multiple uh, items uh, one uh, uh, one of them is race id one another one is driver id constructor id and so on so basically driver id means that this is a means of identifying which driver delivered this result and uh, this driver id is basically the same as this driver id so this is one way of of connecting this table results to the table drivers uh, same thing with constructors you want to know when this result was delivered in which car was this driver driving and this is this is uh, found out through the constructor id this constructor id here in the result is the same as the constructor id here in the constructors and the way you link up these two tables are or is via those um, those fields constructor id and the same thing is valid for races and so on so how do we go about building joints well there are multiple types of joints uh, and for that purpose, I have created a, a fictitious driver from Alaska. Now, I know Alaska is not a nationality or is not a nation, but nevertheless, I put it there because I know for sure that no driver comes from Alaska. And um, this is the driver I have. And if I run the query, that's the guy I got. And now let's do some joining. And the way you, the, we have multiple types of joints and uh, the most common one, uh, well, the one, the one I see most is the inner joint. And let's say I need to um, join, um, let me take that off, we don't need it now. Uh, I need to join the driver's table to the table results we have just seen previously here, the table results. And so the inner joint, that's the type of joint I want. And then uh, the table is results. And now, oops. And now what I gotta do is I gotta specify, okay, this join, this connection via which fields should it take place? Well, you start off with the keyword on, and then you say, okay, from the table drivers, uh, I need driver, uh, driver ID. And from the table driver ID, and from the table results, I also need driver ID. Now here, you, you see it's quite difficult for the program or for SQL to know which one is meant here. You know, which driver ID do you, do you mean? The one from drivers? Or do you mean the one from uh, results? Because we also got a driver ID here. So that's why when you start working with multiple tables or with joins, it is advisable to um, not just put the field like this, but to uh, proceed the field with a table name uh, like this drivers dot and then here results dot. Okay, so now and now we have um, a very clear uh, ID where those fields are coming from. And the same thing here, uh, I would also because I mean, in, in this in this database, I know forename and surname are, are, are you know, just in this table, but nationality is in, in, in different tables. So that's why it is always better when working with multiple tables to proceed the fields with the um, with the table name. So drivers dot, same with here, drivers 
So now, anybody reading the code uh, would instantly know where this field is coming from, and there's no confusion or a confusion or you know wrong assumptions. Right. So if we save that, and I just and now because I've done an inner join with results, I can actually get some uh, data from results and and put it in my query here. So let me go back to my structure, and let's take um, grid, position, and points. So, um, so then what I can do here is I expand my query and say now from results, I can get um, position, I can get uh, points, and I can get grid. That's the grid position they started from, they started the race from. Points are the points they got and position is the position they achieved at the end of the race. Right. So and if I save that, now that's, you see, now that's the beauty of joins. If I run the query, you see here, now I've just basically combined two tables. This is the driver table, the first three columns, and, the, and those columns are from the uh, results table. And shows you that Lewis Hamilton, in some race, I have no idea which one right now, uh, he got position one, he got 10 points and started from grid number one, uh, uh, from the first grid position. And then in another race, he got also first position, but he got here like 25 points. So because I know that the rules in Formula 1 changed at some time, a winner used to get 10 points, now he gets 25. So this is a more recent race than this one. Okay. And here he got, this is also a very recent race, but in this one he got the fastest lap as well. So. Um, this is the kind of the, 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 the point of, of having joints. Now, let me go and get my driver from Alaska. And where uh, drivers dot nationality is Alaska. And if I run that query, you're going to see nobody's turning up. Now, why? Because that fictitious driver I created did took in took no took uh, didn't take part in any races did not belong to any teams or anything so this driver will not be considered by an inner join because an inner join only shows the data represented in both tables in this case drivers and results and you only get in the inner join you only get those drivers who also achieved some race results our fictitious driver did not that's 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 the case with inner join. With inner join, you get only the data which is present in both tables, or which is represented in both tables. Now, if I use the left join, with the left join, and left is in reference to you know left of the equal sign. With the left join, I would get all drivers, and for those drivers without any results, you'll have null. And if I run that query. You will see now our Alaska driver has got null because he has did not take place in any uh, races and hence he has got null for his positions, points, and grid. That's that's the, that's the effect. So it depends. What do I want? Do I want? Do I only want to see those drivers who achieved results? Well, then I need an inner join. Do I need to see all drivers regardless of their results? Well, then I need a left join. And the right join is exactly the opposite. In this case, you would see all the results. And those results without any drivers, they would have null uh, here for the drivers. And, uh, and then the fourth type of join is the outer or full outer. And that would show everything from both tables. And there, where there's no coming ground, let's say if you have a race where no drivers took place, you would have nulls. And those drivers who took no races, who, took, uh, who didn't take part in any races, they, they would have null as well. That's the full outer join. So these, these are the four types of joins you have. Like I said, the most the most I've seen is like uh, uh, inner, left, and right. Basically, inner and left. That's the most ones I see. Left is used when you need to see all drivers, regardless of their position or, or of their results. And the inner is the one most used because there you have the combinations. Now, in our table, in our database here, it doesn't matter whether you use left or inner because all drivers in our database have taken part in some race. So you will not have a guy like this guy who is in the driver's table and who did not take play, who did not race anywhere. That's why I had to create this fictitious driver just to show you this thing. Uh, because all the drivers in our database took place in a race, were in a team, so there is no nulls. So that's why I had to create this driver. Anyways, 
Now we don't need them anymore. Point is explained. And if I uh, now run the query, you'd see I get the same results as before. It doesn't matter whether I use left or inner or right. Uh, it doesn't matter because, uh, like I said, all uh, drivers have uh, taken place in a race. Now, we can now expand that query and include, you know, what in what team did this driver drive and, you know, what, what's the race called and what year was the race and so on. So now if I look at the structure here, I can see like results has got not only driver ID, but it's got like constructor ID and race ID. So I can now, that these fields allow me to uh, do joins with both the constructor table, uh, where is it, uh, up here, constructor table and the race table. So uh, building that is pretty similar to before. Uh, again, do inner join. And this time I take constructors. And again, the, the combination is on constructors. constructors dot uh, constructor ID and that is equal to results dot uh, constructors constructors ID so that's the first one so now uh, with that join I'm able to get some data from the constructor table and combine that into my uh, query here so uh, the only interesting field in constructors is name so I would just take the name, there's the driver. So now we can have the constructors.name and uh, let's call that team. And uh, if I run that query, you see now I can see uh, Lewis Hamilton in McLaren and so on. And actually I don't need the nationality anymore. So you can you know just compact the query more right so we got the constructors now what we can do is get the races as well so we do inner join with the races and um, here again it is on races dot race id and that's equal to results uh, dot race id and now we're able to get some data from the races uh, table. And that would be year, round, and name. So um, here I can get like, so now we have races dot year. And then we have races dot round. And then we have races dot name and we call that race and you see here it's very helpful when you are working with multiple tables that you always proceed the field names with table with the table name because here you see we have in constructors a name we have in races a name and so on nationality is also um, represented with the drivers with constructors and so on so it's always better when working with multiple tables not to use just the field names but use table name dot field name so and races dot name we call just call it race and if I save that query and run that, so now we have uh, full data. Uh, now that's the result of our query. And you see here, that's the beauty of, of joins. We have now joined multiple tables together. So the first two columns come from the table drivers. This column comes from the table uh, constructors. The next three columns come from the table races. And the final three columns come from the uh, table uh, results. And you can see here, just like what I predicted, this result with 10 points was, in, was earlier than this one. And you can see here that was in 2018, whereas this one is in 2009. And you see here now, that's, that's the way you, you create data or, or queries in, 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 in databases. You just combine multiple tables together to get these, this, this result. Now, um, you can also see here the point of joins that without a join, you would have to create such a table and that's not a lot of data. I mean, you, you know, there's a lot of more data to the driver, to the teams, to the races, to the, and so on. So, you know, it's, it, it shows you that the, 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 the huge advantage of joins, you can basically break up the whole data into various objects and then later on, just join these objects together for your query. And let's do a filter here. So I can just say where, uh, races dot year is equal to uh, 2020 and then 
pick a single race and uh, and uh, races round is equal to uh, five. So that means we're now we're gonna be just looking at the fifth round of 2020, and that's that's the that's the that's the result of that race. And we can see, for instance, Lewis Hamilton got position two, basically got second, and he started from grid position two. Uh, Max Verstappen was first, won it, he got 25 points and um, started from uh, fourth position and that's just that race. And obviously you can also add further details to the circuit and so on, so you would have to do another join, uh, joining, joining the, the table circuits in addition to all of these three and then uh, showing circuit data here in your query. So that's the way you, 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 go, you deal with joins. And like I said, you have to decide what kind of join you want. If you just want to see the data which is represented in all tables, then you'd use inner. If you just want to see the data from the left table, you'd, see, you'd use left join. If you, use, if you need to see the data from the right table, you use right join. And if you need to see all data, and nulls where there's no common ground, then you use full outer join or outer join depending on the data base system you're using.